Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. We're gonna take a look at a couple new sets of markers to see if there's something you might wanna add to your collection. This is a review, overview, and comparison. We'll be looking at the new colors and new sets from Artix. Um, they have released new products in their brush markers, which are the Oros alcohol markers, and their classic markers, which are the Alp markers. Uh, so we'll take a look at those. And we'll also compare the, um, the pastel sets from Artix to the Ohuhu pastel set that came out probably about six months, maybe a year ago, because I know a lot of you guys might be deciding between the two, or maybe you already have the Ohuhu ones and you're wondering if the Artix ones would be a good addition. I'm a big fan of budget markers because there's been some really great ones that have come out recently. And when you're comparing them against Copic markers, Copic markers are between, you know, $5.50 and $8 a marker. They're not light fast. These aren't light fast. I find the ink to be very comparable. So this is a situation where I think, yes, you can buy the budget version and uh, have be just as well off. So that's my opinion. I welcome yours, obviously. Um, there are gonna be some pluses and minuses to both, but um, but yeah, uh, I think for the cost savings, it's definitely worth giving some of these budget markers a look. So I first wanna look at the Artix Pastel set, and they are available in both the Oros line, which is their brush line, and they come in a, uh, they come with a bag. They actually come packaged in a cardboard box and everything is separate. You can put it together or you can, you know, leave them apart, you can use the bag for something else. And um, I personally don't use the bags for the markers because uh, I'm usually coloring at home. I mean, I might grab it if I was going out to color at a friend's house, but um, I find them a little cumbersome. I think they're cute and I think they'd be cute for other things like maybe a lunch bag. Um, but I think honestly, these bags are to appeal to a younger demographic. And I think that's who Artix definitely goes after. I think they're more after like the teens, um, maybe early 20s. They're going after that like, kind of like young, hip illustrator um, type of vibe. But hey, I don't, I don't care. I don't care who they're marketing towards. I just don't care if they meet my needs. Um, one thing I like that Artix does is they come with a color chart, which I did color, color. They come with a hand colored chart, which means a color, a chart you color yourself. And then I also swatched them out on my marker paper so I'd have a good idea of how these would perform on paper that I would use. Um, I've noticed like sometimes, actually I think their charts have gotten better. The older Artix charts, it seemed like your markers would look a lot lighter on their chart than they would on marker paper or cardstock, but I think they've changed the paper because the paper does seem to represent very similar to how these would work on my on my marker paper or cardstock. This also comes with a stand. Now all the Artix Oros markers, which are their brush tip markers, come with a um, like a, a plastic grid the markers go into, and also one of these acrylic stands. Now. I don't like these stands because I have snapped so many of these little braces, uh, but this is how you use them anyway. You very gently, just be gentle. You probably won't snap them if you're careful, but I, I thought I was being careful, but apparently I was rushing and I snapped them. So take your time. You put the little stand together like that, and then you take your markers and you just kind of, what I like to do is kind of set it down like that so it hooks into the bottom of the case. I don't think it's hooked in just right. It's, got, it's a little finicky. I'm not gonna lie. And then you tip it over and then the markers will be at an angle on your workspace so you can see, clearly see all your markers while you're working. Um, I like that aspect, but I find the stands to be kind of uh, wobbly. And what I'm probably gonna end up doing is taking the, um, taking these and maybe cutting a piece of cardboard or foam core, making like a little, making, putting some of these together and then making like a little lip with a, with foam core so I can just have like one long row that I can set my markers in because I find this to be very cumbersome. Now, obviously this is, you know, like I mentioned, I think this is geared towards more um, like teens, college student age. So having something that's very compact that you could just kind of like assemble, put on your desk, do your work and then, or go to class with it, do your work and then put it away in your bag. I can see how that um, easy to assemble function would be good. But personally, it's, it's a little cumbersome. And like I mentioned, I've snap these so um so for me that's that's not a big a big win there's also a strap so your bag can be carried over your shoulder i like the size of this bag because you can easily fit the markers in and even use them in the bag they one of their sets i think it was the 90 set it's a really tight fit and you can't um it's really hard to use the markers when they're in the bag and you have to take the markers out of the case to get them out of the bag so i don't like that one but the 80 set the uh, this set here the skin tone set they were all much easier to use 
That said, I actually put all of my other ones in a cubby and I put cut a piece of plexiglass to push up against it so that they wouldn't fall out when I was pulling them out of my cube units. But, um, but there, yeah, that's, I have these separate because, and this is probably my biggest, biggest criticism of these, um, these colors are all duplicated in the other ranges. So if you have the Arctic Oros or the Arctic Alp and you have the 80 set, the 90 set, and the 36 skin tone set, all of these colors will already be in those sets. So I wouldn't recommend buying these unless, um, like if you already have those three sets because you're gonna find duplicates. Any of the 300 numbers in our colors here are in the skin tone set and then the other uh, lower numbers are between the 80 and the 90 set. So you can collect all the colors in the Arctic's line by buying the 36 skin tone, the 80 set and the 90 set and that goes for the, um, the Arctic's Oros markers or the Arctic's Alp markers. Now speaking of the Alp markers, Here's how the Alp markers come. Now the Alp markers are quite a bit cheaper. So the set of 40 brush tip Oros markers are um, $50, but there's a coupon bringing them down to 40. The set of 40 Alp markers are $38 with a 20% uh, off coupon bringing them down to around 30, I think. I love the packaging of the Alp markers. I kind of wish the Oros markers were in the same packaging as the Alp, especially these new ones that don't have the clasps on them. Um, I would almost get rid of the strap and just have the, and actually I've taken the straps off most of my packages. Um, but I mean, you just fold this back and you set it down on your table and you're ready to go. It's so quick, it's so easy, it's so compact. Um, I really love this packaging. And I know it's probably a cheaper packaging because it's all cardboard and inside the little dividers there, the grid is paper instead of plastic, but I've had the other Oros for a couple of years, I'm sorry, the other Alp, Arctic Alp markers for a couple of years, and the packaging is fine. It's It hasn't deteriorated. Um, it's held up really well. So uh, I prefer this packaging and um, that, that's my opinion. Uh, same colorway between the Arctic's Alp and the Arctic's Oros markers. And let's take a look at how they differ. So I'm just gonna grab the same color in both. I got 183. The Alp markers are a white barrel. The Oros markers are a gray barrel. The, um, the Alp markers have a chisel tip and a bullet tip, a, quite a fine bullet tip. Let's see, let me get a, get a piece of paper here. Hopefully that's focusing there. You can see you got a chisel and a bullet. And the Arctic Oros have a brush tip and they have a chisel tip. And I've been using the Arctic Alps for uh, probably nearly two years. Oh God, when they first came out. And I haven't had any breakdown of the nibs or any desalination, which is when you get that funky gunk on the brush tips of markers. So, and I'm using, I chose this one because it's a little bit darker and I knew I would be able to show the, uh, the quality of the line a little bit better. So I've, they're not super flexible. They're not as, not as flexible as uh, like a foam rubber tip, but they are, um, uh, but they're not really stiff either. They're, um, they're very similar to the Ohuhu nibs, I would say. The, I like how the, um, the caps are tapered. You don't, I, I don't think you'd have a risk of damaging your nibs when you're using these markers. Like sometimes, like with the, the Pro Marker, Windsor Newton Pro Markers there and the old Letraset Pro Markers, you could easily damage your nib if you don't, if you're not careful when you put them in. So they have a very fine tip. Their fine tip on the Alt Markers are very fine. And then they essentially have the same chisel for either way. I think the Alt Markers were probably a little bit better if you're an adult coloring book enthusiast because you have a slower flow and that fine tip is gonna get into smaller areas. And with the, some of those adult coloring book pages, they can tend to bleed a little bit. So if you're in those like mandalas and tight spots, or if you're a stamper and you're doing a lot of detailed things, I think actually the Arctic Alp might be a little bit better and they are cheaper, but that's totally up to you. I do find you can get pretty good detail with the brush tip, but there's more flow in the ink. So you might end up fill, overfilling an area when you're working with them. But I mean, that's the preference. I prefer a brush tip marker personally, but I can work with both because I started off using a bullet and a, um, and a chisel. Uh, when I'm using the Alps though, I'll tell you, I'm mostly using the chisel tip because I want that better flow and that wider coverage. And I'm just using the bullet tips for like the edges and details and stuff like that. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind when you're working how you like to work. Um, so seeing that, I do like the color assortment here. And I thought it would be nice to compare this pastel set to the Ohuhu pastel set because um, 
they were kind of all the rage. They were one of the first large pastel sets to be released in a brush tip marker. And um, a lot of people were very excited when they came out. They sold out several times. So I know a lot of you guys have those markers. So I thought it'd be good to, to take a look. So the, um, the Ahuhu marker, there's 48 in a set and they come in a bag like this. So there's no grid keeping your markers in order. So that's another thing is that with both of the Arctic sets, the grid will keep your markers in like color family order or in numerical order, however you like to order them. So if you do a swatch like I did here, I have my swatch in the same order that my markers are in. So it's really easy for me to recall and find what I want. Um, so that's something you might want to keep in mind. These are all just kind of loosey goosey in here. Then again, you might use a separate marker storage system and um, that might make sense to you too. I think these these uh, plain canvas bags also keep the cost down on the markers because these are less expensive. This set is about $35 and there's currently a 5% off coupon on them. So they are cheaper uh, for the set and also per marker because you get 48 versus, um, versus 40. So that's something to also consider. So the, um, the Ahuva markers also have a little uh, plastic barrier that you can put between pages in a sketchbook or in a coloring book. So that's kind of handy. Or you can put it on the table if you're doing artwork and you want to make sure your art doesn't bleed. So I like I like that um, inclusion personally. Not, I know not everybody cares, but I think that's kind of nice. So here is the color swatch compared. I'm just going to set this one over here. These are done on the same marker papers. And um, so these over here are the Ohuhus. The Ohuhu uses a different color numbering system. They do like a... Um, I'm going to zoom in. I hope my camera will focus on this because it is, um, it's so pale. It's probably kind of difficult to see. Um, Ohuhu has some darker tones and also some more just grayed down tones. A lot more neutrals in here. I feel like the Arctic Alp is more of a true pastel set and the Ohuhu set is a lot more of a, um, pastel and, and muted tones. So it really depends on what you want. So let's see if you could get most of the colors. Since there is more in Ohuhu, we can see if all the colors from Arctic's are have a similar counterpart in Ohuhu. So that R20 looks like R18, 196. That's pretty similar to that one. 136, do we have something? I don't see anything as light as 136 in Ohuhu. Let's see, 27. That's kind of similar to that. Um, maybe similar to that. 29, that's kind of similar to that. 313, that's kind of similar to that. 135, this is probably extremely boring. Uh, nothing really quite like 135, 304. And now keep in mind some of these colors might be also more of something that you would have in a skin tone range. Let's see, 318, oh gosh, I gotta get that out of there. It's kind of casting a shadow. Um, that's kind of close to 318 and also kind of close to 310. I guess that could be kind of close to 310. Um, uh, trying to see if there's something close to 309. I guess that would be the closest to 309. 132. Um, I don't quite see something like that. 131. I don't see anything that light. 36. Is that kind of close to, that's, that's more close to 163. Um, 134 is lighter than what they have. I think that, that the Arctic does a lot more with actual pastels. Like a lot of these greens are way lighter than the greens that you would see here. Uh, 59 and 140, those are very similar. 172, I don't see, well, that's, that looks more like 68, I would say. Um, that's darker. Mm, there's not a lot of, well, let's see, we got a light purple. No, that's actually, who, who's light purple seems a little bit lighter. That's pretty similar. Those two are kind of similar to that. I'd say it's similar with the, with um, Arctic having more really, really pale shades and Ohuhu having more uh, shades are a little bit muted or maybe even a little bit darker. So I'd say for a true pastel set, I would say Arctic's is a really good true pastel set. Um, you have a little more variety in Ohuhu, but you're also lacking on some of the really pale shades. So just I just wanted to put that out there in case you already have this set and you might be wondering, is the Arctic set worth getting? It really depends. Do you need those really lighter greens? 
Um, because I feel like that's where Ohuhu really has a lot of the really lighter greens and a lot of the really pale beiges, almost like a yellowy peaches, kind of like really, really pale skin tones. So um, I just want to put that out there in case you were trying to decide if that's something that you wanted to add to your stash. Or maybe you're deciding between the two. These are cheaper. The Ohuhu is cheaper and you get more for your money. So, um, but you don't get the case. You know, it just it just depends on what you're, what you're really after. Uh, so that comparison is out of the way. I think quality-wise, I can compare it. Let's compare a couple of the markers. Oh, something else kind of interesting. Uh, the Ahuhu markers, their their brush tip markers go with like a, um, a Numa Numa Alpha system. So it'll like BG for like blue green, and then it would be like a number. And the um, the Artix goes just by a basic number, kind of like the uh, the old the old, uh, all the ones that are like the Shinhan color system. But if you have the old uh, Ohuhu markers, the classics, they go by the same color system as the new Artix brush markers. So you could actually, if you had like the set of 200 classic Ohuhu markers and you wanted to get a brush version, have the same colors, if you got the Artix, you would have the same colors in a brush format, which I think is very interesting that Ohuhu completely changed their numbering system when they went to the brush markers. But I'll just do a little quick comparison of both of the nibs. Obviously, these are different colors, but let's chisel. Let's do chisel. There was a complaint with the Ohuhu markers. They seem pretty much identical. Um, there was a, a complaint with the original Ohuhu markers that um, their pastel set was not um, pastel enough. Now let's see, I feel like the Artix nibs are more flexible. I feel like the Ohuhu ones are, wait a minute, no. No, I'm sorry, strike that, reverse it. The Ohuhus are more flexible, but it could just be that they're a little bit older. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe the Ohuhu has a better nib to it. It does seem a little bit more flexible. Yeah, I'd say the Ohuhu's a little bit more flexible. Um, so kind of, you know, we don't take it with a grain of salt, but uh, it does to me feel like the Ohuhu is a little bit more flexible. So um, you might want to go for that if you want a more flexible nib. But they're very comparable is what I'm getting at. <laughs> it just depends on the color, mostly the color scheme that you want. So another thing I wanted to show you today was the new dark skin tone set in the Artix Alp range. These have not come out in Oros yet, and these are new colors. These colors are not in the, um, at least not by number, they're not in any of the other Artix ranges. So I should have, well actually I can dump these out and show you. These have, can you see in there, they've got a paper divider in there just like the, um, just like the other ones. They come with, let's just get them all so you can see, I don't think you can see the shadow. So this is what is in the ELP boxes. I think I did get one ELP set that had a plastic divider, but generally in the ELP boxes, you get this kind of like paper cardstock grid. It gets the job done, it, they stay in there and I haven't had any, any issues with them. But just to kind of give you an idea, when you put them in, you do want to be a little bit careful if you're putting them in from empty, because it would be easy to, to bang them down on the edge of the cardboard and, and like kind of crush it. But if you're just taking one out at a time, I haven't had an issue with those damaging the, they really can't damage the cardboard if you have them out one at a time because there's only one place for the marker to go. You know what I mean? It's definitely deep skin tones, purple undertones. Um, really great for if you're coloring black skin or any sort of the deeper, deeper tones. This is a swatch on the Artix paper, and this is a swatch on my marker paper. I think they've really gotten better with their swatches, although I will say maybe they look a little bit darker on my marker paper. But um, you can see, obviously, this is an addition set. I wish they called it like a booster or add-on or something, because if you're looking for skin tones out of 12, these are not going to be as useful without other set colors to go with them. So I just grabbed the Artix Elp. A skin tone set here because I wanted to swatch and like I mentioned before I took all my Artix Auros markers and put them in uh, numerical order I mixed up the sets so I figured it would just make more sense for me to grab this set here so you can see the um, 
what the original skin tone set looks like. And one of my criticisms of the original skin tone set when I reviewed it way back when was that the um, was that there was not enough darker skin tones. Now you could layer up, but if you look at how those are very uh, warm undertones, skin tones there, you might want a cooler undertone, like some of these darker tones here of a much cooler undertone. You might want the lavenders to get cooler shadows. Um, I wonder, if, did I have a swatch in here on um, regular paper? Because this was one of the older swatches and I felt like they were really, yeah. They, see the older swatches, the colors look almost bleached out. They've, I think they've changed their paper because now they're much more, much more useful. I'm just going to use my hand colored swatch because that's a little bit more reasonable to what you'd probably be using at home for paper. So this would be the normal range, the not normal, the first range of 36 Artix colors. Uh, lots of really pale tones, but not a lot of deep tones. And the deep tones are have kind of some warm undertones there, kind of orangey undertones. So these have some almost green or cooler undertones here. And you've just got a you've got a better variety to mix in and add to this. But this is not a standalone set unless you already have some skin tone markers. It doesn't have to be Arctic, they all play together. But I just wanted to show you that in case you're wondering where these fall. Hopefully they're going to come out with a brush tip version because I think when you're blending skin tones, having that brush tip is really essential. It makes it's it's like somebody mentioned to me. Uh, uh, he said it's like driving an automatic or driving a standard vehicle. That's what dry, That's what using brush markers versus using chisel tip markers. Dean is the, uh, the, the viewer that told me that. And I'm like, that's perfect. That's such a perfect analogy. Um, so yeah, this is just going to give you an extra, extra version of color and extra depth of layers that you can get. Now also just for funsies, I wanted to compare this set of the regular Arctic, so the first 36 Arctic colors to the Ohuhu set that I have. Now, I think they've come out with another set of skin tone brush markers since then. So I apologize if this is not the most current set. This is a set of 24. And this is how they look compared to the Art, uh, the Arctic's. The Arctic skin tone set was much nicer, I think. These are so orange undertoned. Um, however, I think this set would be better if you were doing people with darker skin tones because you have these warmer, richer undertones. So I find honestly the combination of these to be really good. Now let's compare this to the new set that just came out from Artix. Honestly, if you have the old Ohuhu set of 24, you might not find as much of an advantage to getting the new Artix Alp set because there are darker colors in the Ohuhu set already. So if you have the Ohuhu set and the Arctic set of skin tones, I think you're probably all set. If you don't have the Ohuhu set, but you have the Arctic set of 36, having the, the booster set of 12 is really going to, um, really going to expand what you can do for skin tones. So I'm not a marker snob. I'm not a mar uh, brand loyalist. I love these, all these companies, all these brands. Honestly, I can say that both working with Ohuhu, I've, I've written blog posts for them. They've paid me to work for them. Um, and then just doing reviews from Artix from them sending me products for free. Uh, they're all really good people and they really care about the customers and they care about their products. And if there's a problem, they want to know about it and they want to fix it. So I'd say that for both of those companies. Um, so just get what is going to, what is going to meet your needs. Um, and if it means it's a mixture of the two, that's fine. If it means it's a completely other brand, if you already have markers, obviously use those cause you have them, right? Um, so I just wanted to compare those because it can be confusing. There's so many options and I want to make sure that you are getting the right product for your needs, basically. And um, it's not often that you get to, you get new colorways coming out and it's always kind of curious to, you know, you I, I know I wonder, it's like, do I already have these colors? Are these colors going to be just repeats or are they actually going to add to what I have? So um, I know these are pretty popular brands right now and I just wanted to compare them in case you were looking to add to your sets of markers. Um, I like them all. I find the quality to be very similar. Just depends on what kind of nibs you want and how much you want to spend. But, um, but there you have it. I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to go through and pause the video if you need to see the uh, the different swatches and to compare. Um, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out. And I hope you found this um, enlightening and enjoyable. Thanks for watching. And as always, happy crafting. Bye.